Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here to listen to our presentation. We are innovative stars from Ashoma Presby 1 in the Ghana East District. I am Kelvin Ayuma, the CEO of the team, and these are my teammates. Segla Samuel, Chief Technical Director. Patrick Boya, Logistics and Procurement Director. Afami Samuel, Development and Research Director. Bernard Kwashi, Sales and Marketing Director. Godwin Awuku, Financial De Director. Our mission is to enhance living together by saving lives. Our values are responsibility, innovation, customer focus, and enterprise, which, also, which guides us in our business. So over the years, Ghana has experienced a lot of natural disasters, such as fire outbreak, floods, earthquakes, etc. The series of earthquakes serves, the series of air tremors serves as a sign for a potential earthquake serves as a sign for a potential earthquake. There is a saying, prevention is better than cure, but even though we are not preventing the earthquake from happening, we are helping to save lives after those disasters occur. Despite the efforts of the disaster management organizations, there is still a lot to be done regarding rescue operations. That is why we Innovative Stars brought about the robotic rescue scanner to help detect victims trapped after natural disasters. So I'll hand it over to the CTO to give us some scientific and technological principles of the device. The robotic rescue scanner is a device that will be deployed after natural disasters to detect for victims. Some external features of the RRS, which is a robotic rescue scanner, includes a bow, which also serves as the body of the car. It should be further improved in its final stage. It should be a bimetallic container to uh, stand against rough weather conditions. Also, we have tires which enables it to move on the ground, and also a switch which controls the open and closed circuit. It also, it also have motors which drive the four wheels. Also, some internal parts of the robotic rescue scanner includes the ESC ESC camera which detects victims and sends the information back to its operator in real time. It also has the motor driver which controls all the four motors. It also has batteries which convert chemical energy into electrical energy and sends it to the motors which turns it into electromagnetic rotation. Also, it has a boat system which will be further developed in the final stages of the product. Also, we have, it works with some scientific principle, which is it, the batteries convert chemical energy into electrical energy. Also, the ESC camera con, uh, detects victims and sends the information back to its operator via Wi-Fi. Also, it will be able to float on water through the principle of buoyancy. Also, in the final stage of our product, we will add an area system which will help it to um, operate in the air. I will hand it over to the sales and marketing director to tell us about our target audience. Our, our target audience are the National Disaster Management Organization, which is the number one disaster management organization in Ghana. Humanitarian and emergency rescue organizations such as the United Nations and World Vision Ghana. Also, private companies like the mining companies, example, Oboasi Mines and Ashanti Gold, and many more, which are located in the Volta, Ashanti, Eastern and Western region of Ghana. As a, med as a sales and marketing director, I will improve the customer relationship with our target audience. And in terms of management, I will provide personal assistance and also give after sales service support. The channels through which our, our, our project is going to be advertised are mainstream media, as, uh, example, TV, radio, and print. Also can be advertised on social media sites such as a Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And if possible, can also be advertised on e-commerce sites, such as a Jumia, Digi.com, and Amazon. 
We are also going to have partnership with the government and emergency rescue organization. Also, we are going to run several tests on our device at different locations where our target audience are situated to show them that our device is truly a genuine one. I'll hand it over to the next person. Our key, our key resources are physical resources, which are the office location, production facility, showroom, and testing center. Intellectual resources, such as copyright, we need to seek protection for this device so that it cannot be stolen by anybody. Skilled employees. Uh, Human resources, which are skilled employees. Humans are the main resources we need in a business. Uh, financial resources, which are capital. Cap uh, we, the, ma the money we collect from our friends, relatives, and friends to run this business. I'll hand it over to the research and development center. Okay. So for the key partners, our key partners will be our inventors and our investors and our venture capitalists. So there are those who are going to invest inside our business. And for the second, we have the, the uh, government agencies, such as the NCA, National Communication Authority. We also have the NADMO, and the, we also, also the NADMO. And also our third key partner is uh, Google. We can also find them on the Google Cloud. And our key activities are research and development. For the research and development, will be all, it will be always constant in the company. And, uh, and we also have registration and licenses. For the registration and licenses, we are supposed to register our company. And also our device is in a vehicle from which means we are going to need licenses before we proceed with the rest of the things. We also have design and production, how our device is going to be produ produced. And for the last one, we have Okay, I'm going to hand it over to the next person. So the cost, so the cost structure is, the cost structure is, the cost structure of the business, the cost structure of the business is spending money on design and develop, design and production, research and development, general or admin costs such as the overhead costs, labor cost and also for uh, for all the revenue sources we are hoping to generate income from from sales of product from sales of product partnership consultations and after sales services so i'll hand it over to the cto to again give us the risk factors of the device although our device is solving a social problem there are also some risk factors involved, such as prolonged use with some of the materials, such as the ultrasonic sensor can cause radiation. The, ra the prolonged radiation of the ultrasonic sensor testing can lead to cancer. Also, the, also, the socioeconomic uh, problem is that, since it is in a robot form, it can cause the job of many people. And also, working with in construction, working, some working projects such as welding can also cause harm to the workers. So we will solve this problem by the workers who put on PPE, which is personal protective equipment during construction. Also, we will put a label on the device which will caution the users that prolonged use with some of the materials can lead to ultrasonic radiation, which causes cancer. Testing and evaluation is a continuous process which will help improve our device. But at the final stages, we hope to do research and development to help our device have improved features. We, the innovative stars, came hand in hand to build a project, but, the, but unfortunately, for now, we have a technical force, so we have a video of the device working on the projection, working on the projection. So as you can see, they were using a laptop to, as you can see, they were using a laptop to control, to control the device.
this image you are seeing here was captured by the ES Nexity camera. In the final stages of our product, we will add an ultrasonic sensor, which will also help the car to detect obstacles and automatically dodge them. We will also train the ES Nexity camera to detect victims and send it back to its operator. Therefore, as you can see, all that we've said work with the team live together. That is why we came together to form a team marketing brand, a team marketing logo, which is Together for Humanity. Thank you. Also, when you are talking, look at me. <laughs> What's your name? Kelvin Ayuma. Regular Samuel. Samuel. You are, you are selling to me. Okay. At some point, I was asking Ohima, are you reading? I know you're not reading. You don't, don't say it. I know you're not reading. But it felt like you were reading. I'm sure you are very bright. But learn how to connect with people. If you are selling to me and you are just talking, so it was like you are just telling me what I should hear. And buy it and, le and let's go. You see, do a more of a connection and then let me understand why I should buy it. You just rattled. I had to listen to you to be able to know exactly what I should be looking out for. So it's to the team, everyone and everybody here. Some of these soft skills are good, okay? Communication skills. So learn it and then um, just be better at it. But you were good. You were good. I admire you for that. Thank you. Um, so like usual, I would want to understand your product. Mm? You say it's supposed to be a rescue or search and rescue sort of robot. That is what it says. Yes, please. And it's supposed to be deployed in situations where there is disaster. Yes, please. Okay. Just name a few disaster situations you think this can work in. Okay. The recent flooding in Gota due to the dam, the device can actually float, and if there was to be any victim under the water, it could have probably detected the victim and send the information back to the disaster management organization. This would have been easier for them to do the exact Slow mitigation down. and rescue the victim. Okay, so with this example you have given, what you are saying is that it should be able to, it is able to go into water. No. Or it floats on water. It floats on water. But you know that if I am in water and in a disaster situation, I would already be drowning or I would have drowned. So how would it be able to detect me if I am in the water and not on top of the water? Okay, so at the final stage of this product, we will add a human detective sensor which will be able to detect humans. Exactly. So these are some of the responses I was looking at. Because technically, even if it is a disaster of, let's say, a collapsed building, this would be very difficult to enter such, a, such an environment. I hope you understand. Because I doubt that it would be able to climb stairs go over obstacles and all of those things. I hope you get what I mean. Yes. So, so try and make sure that at least if it's not able to do that, the sensors or whatever you are putting on is able to detect some of these things. So if it's not able to go into a broken down building because it can't climb uh, debris and all of that, it should be able to send some UV signal, some infrared signal that would be able to detect heat sensors in the room and detect that there's somebody here and all of that. I hope you understand. Yes. yes. So try and develop it a little further than you have now. Okay? Yes. But it was a good attempt. Yeah. Thank you. So we have come to the end of the Ghana Science and Tech Explorer Prize Pitching and Judging events for the year 2023. This is the end of the Greater Accra event, and we are so excited. We saw so many 
innovative ideas, and we can't wait to be in Ashanti region. <laughs>
research for the best codes and how to implement them. We also face the challenge of communication. Since our device was unable to communicate effectively, so instead of using the Bluetooth model, we resorted to using the GSM after careful consideration and testing. Our device is going to be rented out at 2,000 Ghana cities monthly. That, that includes the materials and the building. Away from the cost, what makes our device different from already existing ones is that it uses solar power, thereby conserving energy. It also uses GSM module that sends an SMS alert to phones when the, it detects drowning. After, from here, we'll be looking for sponsorship with Ghana Tourism Authority and other TV stations for publication and to promote our device. Our main aim is just to save lives. The lifeguard towards a bright future. I go by the name Philip Ampoma Ama Bielsen. I'm Richard Mawena. Mr. Sari is my name. And Lassam Tilabi Katrin. Thank you. Okay, so our prototype, before you enter the private or the public swimming pool, our prototype comes in two forms, as I said earlier. So the mobile device is for the situation whereby you go to the public pool and you are entering the pool. So you have to take it with you before you enter the pool. So that one accommodates the IR sensor, as I said earlier. So I'm about to demonstrate. Do we have to come there to see it? We have to come there. So please, any questions? Okay, so just for clarity, so that everybody understands what you are doing. Okay. From my observation, it looks like you are submitting two different products, and you told me that they all work hand in hand. But I would want you to also explain to us 
those two different products and how they work differently. Okay. Briefly, don't go into the technicalities. Okay. Just tell us exactly what they do. Okay. So this device, this is for the situation whereby you are entering the pool. So you have to have it on it so that when you are maybe drowning, it, it will, you can press the emergency button or it will automatically send your pulse and it will send signal to the lifeguard phone or smart device, yes. So that is for this one. And this is maybe for your house, you have um, a pool in your house and you are not, there, is, there are children around and you are, you are not aware and maybe the child falls into the pool. So the, the wave splash, the wave splash, will hit the gyroscope, which, which then will trigger the buzzer to alert the people around that there is a situation going on, yes. Okay, so the, for the first device, you say it is a strap on, so you would have it on your arm. Yes, please. Like a watch or something of the sort. Yes, please, an, an armband, yes. Okay, and you said it does two things if you are drowning. Yes. The first thing is that you would have to push a button. Yes, that's the first option. That's the first option. Yes, please. And the second option is it, uh, it senses your pulse. Yes. How is it able to detect drowning pulse and okay. regular swimming pulse? Okay. So the when a person is drowning, his or her pulse decreases. It's less than uh, 50 BPM. So this device is equipped with an, a, a heart rate sensor that will be able to send the pulse and send signal to the phone, alerting the people around that there is a situation going on. Okay, okay. I think I am satisfied with okay. the answers you have given. Thank yeah. you very much. Also, okay, so can you clarify if the one in the pool also has that distress sensor? No, please. That one will be attached to the walls of the pool. So that one will just sense the wave emitted by the splash to um, trigger the alarm. And you said whoever has the receiving, the receiving message can, um, you said it can post something. Pardon? Okay, so if I find out that my child is in, um, drowning or someone is drowning, yes, then it means that I quickly have to give it attention. Yes, please. Okay, what I was looking out for was the distress, but since you explained to Johannes, I'm good. Okay. Hello. Hello. Okay, so with the one in the pool, yes. right, how big is it going to be? Because you're saying if a child falls into the pool, yes. or if someone falls into the pool, it has to splash first onto the device, right? Yes, please. So you know what, let's say the pool is like, the let's just use your table. Okay. And it's on this end, and the person falls from here. Yes. There so... It's put in the code. The slightest movement of the gyroscope will trigger the alarm. Okay, yes. so not necessarily a splash. Yes, please. Okay. Just a wave movement. Okay, thank you. No, that's it. It's a, it's a good thing, um, as we usually hear of children falling into pools and dying. Yes. I think this is a good thing, so well done. Thank you very much. Gifted hands, touching hearts and saving lives. Good afternoon, judges. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Queen Kojo Veshi, a member of the Gifted Hands team, and I'm here with my friend, Peter Millicent for Kennedy. Clement. Hello. To present about our project, which is the Traffic Assistance Police Watch Accumulator Device, model 2023, known as the TAP Watch. We all know that accident is an unexpected event, and we have some various places like the school, the home, the workplaces, and the hospitals where accidents normally occurs. But the main accident, which reduces the population of people, lost lives and cause harm is road accidents. 
some causes of road accidents are speed changing lanes, stress when driving. But the major cause of road accidents is overspeeding. We all know that overspeeding endangers everyone on roads and can cause road accidents. Some common places these accidents normally occur are the parking lots, stop signs, rural highways, and two lane roads. According to the Motor Traffic Transport Department, known as the MTTD, reported that there was 16% increase in road accidents in the year 2005. And between 2007 and 2010, the MTTD reported that 6,000 people died through road accidents and 40,000 were seriously injured within the same interval. According to the Motor Traffic Transport Department, which was published on their website, overspeeding killed 12,330 people in the year 2021. They also reported that almost 2,000 people died on highways through road accidents between January and October 2022. Just last year, one of our best teachers called Mr. Nate also had a motor accident on Tema Motorway when he was going home on weekends. He was sent to the 37 military hospital, but later died within a while. This makes us lost our loved ones. May his soul rest in peace. Even though the Motor Traffic Transport Department, which was established in the year 1952, a unit under the Ghana Police Service, developed a device on 4th November 2019, which can detect over speeding vehicle, called the speed gun, but this could not solve the challenges they were facing. So they find it difficult to arrest drivers who exceed speed limits. So to find a way of preventing over speeding, speed limits must be put in place. The speed limit in which drivers must drive is kilometers per hour, or miles per hour. In this process, we developed a device called the Traffic Assistance Police Watch Accumulator Device, in short, the TAP watch, which is aimed to capture dangerous and common speed violations. This TAP watch will also help to arrest drivers who exceed speed limits and drivers who break traffic rules and regulations, which will help maintain human resource in our country. Materials used in building the top board. The top board is made up of the breadboard, the infrared proximity sensors, the PCB, the I2C ICD screen, the jumper wires, the solar panel, the USB cable, the ESP32 camera, the LED lights, and the USB cable. Our team made this device that will capture and calculate the speed of fast moving vehicles. We assembled all the materials that I just mentioned. We fixed the LED light by soldering it on the PCB and we also fixed the camera with a case on the PCB. We connected the LED light with the jumper wires to the breadboard. We also connected the USB cable to the camera, to the PCB. We also connected the screen with the jumper wires to the breadboard. We also connected the power bank to the Arduino Nano so that it will help power the device. We now did the coding so that the top part will work exactly as we want. We used the Arduino IDE software to do the coding. We coded that if a car exceeds the speed limit above 50 kilometers per hour, the red lights in the top wall should display. But if the car is speeding 49 kilometers below, the green lights should display. We program the top wall in a way that after when the proximity sensors are calculated the speed of the moving vehicle, the speed of the moving vehicle should display on the screen. We now tested how the top part will work. We saw that what we programmed the top part to do is what it does. After the testing of the top part, 
We made a case that will cover the proximity sensors, the breadboard, and the connecting wires on the breadboard. We also made a case that will cover the screen, and we set the tap word within our community. How the tap word uses science and technology. The tap word uses science and technology due to the use of the solar panel that traps sunlight and converts it into electrical energy and store it in the power bank. The top pod also have an infrared proximity sensor that is a non-contact sensor that can detect an object or anything when the target enters the sensor field range. The infrared proximity sensor has a pair of transmitting and receiving tubes when the transmitter light waves are received by the receiving tube. Distance is calculated based on the intensity of radiation. The infrared proximity sensors uses a formula which is speed equal to distance over time to use to calculate the speed of moving vehicles. The top pod also has an infrared an Arduino Nano that helps in controlling all the components in the top pod. When a car is over speeding, due to the use of the Arduino Nano, the red lights in the top pod will display and if the car is not over speeding, the green lights will display. The top pod also have a screen that displays the speed of moving vehicles. How the top pod works. The top pod works when a car passes by the two proximity sensors which are connected to the breadboard and the Arduino Nano. The Arduino Nano have been programmed in such a way that when a car exceeds the speed limit above the particular speed limit that it should go, example like the 50 kilometers, and the sensors calculated it, the I2C ICD screen, which is connected to the breadboard with a jumper wire, will display whether the car is over speeding or it is not over speeding. So after the calculation of the car and the screen displays it, the red LED soldered to the PCB will display when the driver is over speeding and the camera attached to the PCB will capture a short video on it. The green LEDs also will display when the driver is at its normal rate of speed that it should go. After the calculation of all the, uh, of all the number plates of the car, the camera contains a memory card which will store the short video and the pictures that it has captured for the MTTDs to know the driver who is over speeding and can arrest that driver at that particular time. So let's observe how the top work works. We want to, we want to show you the so video on how... So as it is how moving, okay. the green light display, meaning the driver is not over, the car is not over speeding. So it is reaching a normal speed, meaning the car is speeding below 50 kilometers. And as it moves, the red LEDs also display. As we all know, color red means danger. So when the driver is over speeding and the red LEDs display, Due to the use of the Arduino Nano, it controls everything. So when the red LEDs display, it will alert the driver that he or she is over speeding. Who is the top one made for, which is the target market? The top one is aimed at the Motor Traffic Transport Department, in short, the MTTDs. This is because they ensure road safety and free flow of traffic on roads. They also regulate traffic rules and regulation on roads. So they, they find it difficult to arrest drivers who exceed speed limits and drivers who break traffic rules and regulation. So they develop the speed gun that can solve the challenges they were facing. But this speed gun could not solve the challenges the MTTDs were facing. So the top one will help the MTTDs to arrest drivers who exceed speed limits. And also, the National Road Safety Authority are also our target, the estate developers and the district assemblies. The cost of our device. The affordable price at which we will sell our device to our target audience will depend on the material cost, the labor cost, and the overhead cost. The materials we use in building our project cost 1,600 Ghana cities. The labor cost of our device cost 1,200 Ghana cities. And also, the overhead cost of our device cost 11,000 Ghana cities. 
the reason why the overhead cost of our divine cost 11,000 Ghana cities is because the key resources we need in building our projects are the laptops, cameras, calculators, routers, smartphones, workshops, and the office spaces. So when we did the calculation, which is an issue of all the money that we spent and we will be spending in doing the work, it all cost 39,000 Ghana cities. So for us to sell our device, we will sell it at a price of 3,500 Ghana cities. This is the affordable price at which we will sell our device to our target audience. Can you come again with your pricing? Let me give you that chance. Clarify it. 3,500 Ghana cities. How much is your overhead? Your overhead cost? Overhead cost is 11,000 Ghana cities. So why are you charging 3,000? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I get you. But I, I am, so let me say that we've seen some of this presentation, but you've given us a better look, a better outlook of the project. And so for that, I'll give it to you. To actually build a community with a police post and having um, a runway or a street and actually mimicking how it will look like gives us a better outlook of what you're actually saying. Um, you've done well. We hope that you get investors to be able to buy because for this, I'm sure estates, I, didn't know, I, I, I don't know if they mentioned their target market, but you should be looking at probably estates and then the government. I don't know if that is already in your target yes. group. They are in Imkwe also, Kato, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done well. Good presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So I saw, was it the green light yes. when it was slow enough? But I didn't see the red. Did you demonstrate the red? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so you just demonstrate just that part where the car was moving and it was able to detect the two with the two colors. So one that is going uh, at top speed and the other that is going at regular speed. Please, Mr. Abdul, here. Because the red light is on. Yes. Okay, that is fine. Okay, so I saw the green light. That's okay. Okay. So to fully understand this, okay, what you are saying is that you, you are selling a device, not the full setup, right? You are selling a device, and the device is able to measure speed of a moving vehicle. Yes, please. Is that so? Yes, please. Then you said it does what else? It will help to arrest drivers who exceed speed limit. So it also has a camera. Yes. That information goes to who? The MTTD. The MTTD. Yes, please. How is it transmitted to the MTTD? Please, this will be connected to their phone, the camera. Maybe they will not be there. Only the tap word will be on the road. They will be at another place. So when the overspeeding cars overspeed, the device, the camera will capture it, then send it to them because it's connected with the Wi-Fi and with the software, it will connect to them. Then the video will be sent to them. Okay, so it will be sent by internet. That yes, is what, yes, what you please. mean. Okay. Well, I would agree. This is a very beautiful setup. This is a very beautiful setup. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
afternoon to you all. We are Team Classicals from Taifa Community One Basic School. We've made a device called the TC Air Purifier, which traps dust and deactivates microorganisms present in the air. So today our presentation will cover how the problem was identified, how it was tackled, about our prototype, the business aspect, the risk aspect, and also our timeline. How the problem was identified. Air pollution is the introduction of harmful and toxic gaseous substances into the atmosphere, which makes the air we breathe impure. Air pollution is one of the major topics in Ghana and the African continent at large. Over the years, there has always been an increase in respiratory-related issues in the country, which has caused the death of many people, all as a result of air pollution. And not leaving my community and my school out, which has a very dusty environment. But the question now is, do we just leave this only for the respiratory scientists to find solutions to them? The answer is no. This is why our team decided to build a TC air purifier which traps dust, deactivates and kills microbacterial and viruses present in the air. How the problem was tackled. Our air purifier works on the principle of separation of mixtures. It works by drawing on clean air to pass through its medium. Our air purifier contains a UV sterilizer and a filter. The UV sterilizer plays a role of, of deactivating and killing microbacterials present in the air. The filter plays of a role of trapping dust, making the air coming out pure and clean for inhaling. As we all know, many rooms and offices have their windows covered with nets and glass fiber. They have the ability of trapping dust that are a little bit larger in size. They don't have the capacity of deactivating or killing microbacteria present in the air. That's why we, Team Classicals, came about and deliberated on ideas how to solve this problem. And we came about a device called the TC Air Purifier. Talking about the prototype, the TC Air Purifier is a design prototype intended for solving the health problems caused by air pollution. Some materials you will be making this prototype is 8 inches ventilator, UV sterilizer, filter, three quarter plywood and other minor materials such as switch, screws. The electrical connection of this device uses a cable, a switch, and a three pin plug, which has a fuse and an earth wire. The, fu the, the fuse prevents electrical shocks. Our initial design of our prototype used filters from, filters from motorbikes and cars, but it was discovered that those filters do not allow air to pass through them. That is why we use filters from air condition. Although our prototype is in a rectangular form, that does not mean that all the purifiers that will be produced will be in this form. It may be in a triangular form. The inner part of our prototype was meant to prevent the rough surface from absorbing some of the air. And the outer is just for beautification and also to radiate heat. When it comes to the business aspect of our prototype, per our research and investigations, we've seen that air purifiers are in high demand, but the most available ones are expensive for some average Ghanaians to afford. Our air purifier costs a fraction of other models, but still works effectively. It sold at a price of 1,600, with the inclusion of the UV sterilizer. How eight parts can be easily replaced, and the availability of eight parts in the market makes it unique and different from other models. In terms of the business channels, we've identified several channels to sell our device. We will sell them directly to customers. We will use online retailing, and also it will be available in all retailing shops in Ghana. Our air purifier will be advertised on all social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. We will visit social gatherings such as schools, churches, and marketplaces 
to educate them on how it works effectively. It will be also advertised on all TV and radio stations across Ghana. Again, we will employ the assistance of celebrities to market our device for us. This is because celebrities have vast followers and their ideas are easily bought. Our air purifier will be brought to the market with a user guide, which is going to assist users to operate it to their satisfaction. This TC air purifier can be used by anyone and where there is availability of electricity. In relation to the risk factor of this device, clogged filters or dirty filters may cause ventilator to work with high pressure and damage ventilator earlier than it's supposed to last. In view of this, filters are supposed to be cleaned every two months, especially those living in a dusty environment and a dusty community. When it comes to our timeline or our next step, when we are being sponsored, we are going to make this device in a commercial scale and also include solar panel as its alternative power source. For our device to be more durable, we are going to use plastic instead of the wood. We came together and realized that when we use the wood, it made our work bulky. So we are going to use plastic for it to be lighter and durable. Thank you. A demonstration of how our prototype works. Uh, the demonstration is going to require dust and smoke, so please pardon us to use them here. She poured, as she poured the sun, the ventilator draws the unclean surrounding air to pass through the mediums of the filter. The UV sterilizer bulb deactivates and kills microbacteria present in the air, making the air coming out pure and safe for inhaling. This is the filter. It plays the role of trapping dust in the air. And we added cotton to it so that it can also trap fine particles and seeds. As you can see, some of the dust particles she poured have
Leighton found a trapping the smoke into the device. The filter and the cotton is also trapping the smoke. You can realize that the smoke is not coming out from the outlet. This is how the filter and the cotton trap the tool the smoke produced. said earlier the outlet was made this way to restrict some of the air inside the machine so that the UV sterilizer can take time and work on the microbacterials and viruses inside before it gets out as you said earlier the use of the wood makes our work bulky so we are going to contact uh, we are going to contact reusable waste plastic, we are going to contact cycling plastic company so that they will provide us with plastic to make our work lighter in weight and also plastic can be in di of different shape. Thank you. Team Classicals. Team Classicals. So please, is there any questions? Yes, please. <laughs> you've, you've done very well. I wanted to find out, and um, the filter, how do you change it? By the use of the user manual, you will get to know the instruction on how to fix it. It's easy to be fixed, but unless you read it from the user manual, no, so you have to tell me. Okay. Okay. It's, it is sticked with a glue, so you can easily tear it up and... the glass fiber we use to um, to attach the cotton on the filter and this one is the ACL filter filters from air condition and this is the cotton so when the cottons are that you can easily remove them and replace another one and just stick the glass fiber on it and you are good to go thank you Okay, so let's talk about a little of the science. Um, for the dust, yes, we know that they are uh, predominantly made of solid fast, uh, particles. Even if it is fine, you'll be able to still trap it with your cotton.